We're now going to use the graph of a function to answer some questions. And what we're going to start with is the following. Suppose that we want to know that we're given the following function. f of x is x squared minus 2x minus 3. And its graph is provided here. So here's the graph of this function. And the first thing that I want to know is the point 1 minus 3 on the graph. Well, in order to find that, we just go over 1 minus 3, and we look at this point right here. Here's our 1 minus 3. And notice it's not on this magenta line. So the answer is no, because it's not on the line. So that's one of the things that the graph can tell us, is we can go to that point and determine if that point actually exists there or not. Well, in a similar sense, we can look at the following question. Find all values of x5. Find all the places where x5 is on the graph. Okay, since I've, I've given a y value, what we do is we draw a horizontal line through 5. And notice it hits this point and this point. So the points are minus 2, 5 and 4, 5. And that's it, just those two points for this particular graph. And I could do that for any value of x that I wanted, or for any value of y that I wanted. Well, looking at the graph, I can also find the y-intercepts, if any. And so we look straight down the y-axis, and we notice that right there, we get our intercept. It's at 0, minus 3. And finally, what about the x-intercepts? So here, we're going to go across the x-axis. we got one here, and we get another one here at minus 1, 0. So our x-intercepts, if any, are at minus 1, 0 and 3, 0. So using the graph, I could find all of this information. And this is really important, because that really makes our lives easier if we can recognize that information from the graph. Well, sometimes we can look at some other things. So let's suppose that we have the following graph. We don't know what this one is, but it goes around this way. And so what I want to know is if, there, if a particular point is on the graph or not. And so let's determine if the point 5, 1 is on the line. So we come over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1. Oh, look at that. That point, sure enough, is on there, because when I draw the point, it passes through the magenta line. There's also a point at minus 1, 3. And there's a point at 0, 2 and any other point. Notice that all of these are fractions along here, so I'm not going to look for them. But any point along here is on the line, as is here, as is here. It, those all evaluate from the function, so they're all valid points. The other thing that we could do is we could talk about our range. So our range, we start at the bottom and we go up and we find anywhere that there is a point. So as we go up, it's all clear through here, but I get my first point here at minus 2. So the bottom of my range is at minus 2, because that's the bottom of my graph. And we go up and up and up, and we get all these points right here. And as soon as I get to here, it stops and it comes down. So here, at positive 3, it stops. So my range goes from minus 2 to 3. And we're going to assume that since this is, shows an arrow on the end, it just keeps going and it never goes up or down. So that's sufficient for my range. We can also get our domain. In the domain, we go from the left to the right rather than the bottom to the top. So we get our first point in our domain at minus 4, and then it hits an arrow, so it goes on to infinity. So using the graph, I found my domain and my range. And this is the easiest way to find both of these if you have the graph of what you're looking at, of your function. And so that's how we can determine whether a point is on the graph and whether what the range and domain of a, of a, gra of a function are given their graph.